In this video, we are going to learn about the mathematics of general relativity. This video is going to be your study guide regarding the mathematics and learning process of relativity. I am going to tell you how to study, what is the method, what are the strategies that you need to adapt in order to study, most importantly, what are the best books which are concerned to general relativity, which book contains what kind of mathematics, how can you find the books, what could be the resources for learning and most importantly, each and every content of this book, I would be showing you what are the content of relativity that would be covered, which book is easy to start and which book you should go with. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on physics for students. I welcome you to my channel. Before going ahead, I would like to tell you not to skip this video because each and every part of this video will be an important and integral part in your learning process. So hold back, take a note and find out the links in the description box in order to have a clear understanding on the mathematics of general relativity. Before we start and go ahead with this video, I would like to tell you what are the topics we are covering. Yes, we are covering a lot of topics. First, we would understand what is general relativity. What is the approach? I mean to say, how would you go ahead with the study of relativity? Is self-teaching or self-taught a process of relativity is at all possible or not? What are the core concepts of special relativity? Uh, what are the best books that you can have on special relativity? What are the core concepts of general relativity? Why do we need tensors in relativity? What is a metric tensor? What is the parallel transport, Riemann curvature tensor and covariant derivative? What is the geodesic deviation, the Ricci curvature and Ricci scalar? What is the stress energy momentum tensors? Because tensors are important, what are the best books that you should learn? What are the topics that are uh, written on those books? What is curved surfaces, manifold and differential geometry? What are the overall topics uh, which cover up differential geometry? What are the best books that you should read on differential geometry? And what are the best books that you should learn on general relativity? Before I go ahead and start with this video, I would like to tell the viewers that I am not going to teach you in this video each and every concept on a very detailed manner. But this video is more or less about a study guide approach, uh, getting ahead with the books, which books you should learn and how you will go ahead. I am trying to give you the maximum possible exposure and I am going to show you each and every content that is covered in the book and how it will help you. So first, I know it is uh, very difficult to tell in short, but let us see what is general relativity. Now, geometric theory, which is uh, developed by Einstein and others. So, general relativity is also known as general theory of relativity and Einstein's theory is the geometric theory of gravitation published around 1915 by Albert Einstein and is the current description of gravitation in modern physics. General relativity generalizes special relativity and refines Newton's law of universal gravitation providing a unified description of gravity as a geometric property of space and time or four-dimensional space-time. Uh, in particular, uh, the curvature of space-time is directly related to the energy and momentum of whatever matter and radiation is spread out. The relation is specified by Einstein field equations and is a system of second law, second order partial differential equations. Newton's law of universal gravitation, which describes classical gravity, can be seen as a prediction of general relativity for the almost flat space time around us. Some predictions of general relativity, however, are beyond Newton's law of universal gravitation. So, what we see in this figure is that Newton's law of universal gravitation is being generalized to a space time curvature, which is being generalized further, which is a sun which has a kind of a curvature, white dwarf creates a bigger curvature, neutron star even a bigger curvature and then the highest curvature of infinite density is other black hole. 
So from Newton's law of universal gravitation, we are going to the curvature of space-time, which generalizes into cosmological black holes. The straight lines in Newtonian physics is being generalized and I would say extended further to geodesics. The space-time, uh, which is where space, is, uh, space and time is time, as independent identities are now lumped up in something which we call space-time. The Einstein's field equations, which uh, describes the entire curvature of space-time and the uh, physics of general relativity, is being expressed in terms of tensors. And uh, general relativity has given us a huge opportunity in terms of exploring the cosmology, the black holes, the gravitational time dilation, and gravitational waves. So these predictions concern uh, the passage of time, the geometry of space, the motion of bodies in free fall, and the propagation of light, which includes gravitational time dilation, gravitational lensing, gravitational redshift of light, the Shapiro time delay, and singularities and black holes. So this is a very humble effort from my side just to explain what is general relativity in one particular slide. So uh, what I can tell you is that the second law of Newton's uh, second uh, uh, Newton's law f equals to a ma it gets extended into uh, what is called a geodesic equation. So uh, what we can tell is that the motion, uh, which is the classical motion, which is in Newton's law, law, is being extended to geodesics, and the universal law of gravitation, which takes care, uh, takes further into gravitational potential, is being uh, further defined in Einstein's uh, field equations, that means gravity is being extended further as a curvature. So this is uh, what I can tell you is basically what is general theory all about in a very crisp manner. The equation of motion gets generalized to geodesic and the equation of gravity gets generalized and in a tensorial format in Einstein's field equations which describe the curvature of space-time. So, uh, what we can tell is that the Newtonian or classical mechanics, which contains some important concepts like momentum, velocity, force and energy, vector and mass, motion and acceleration, these are uh, basically generalized in the form of special theory of relativity. So, I have made a video in which I have shown earlier that how the uh, classical mechanics laws are further extended to special theory. And the special theory further gets generalized into general theory of relativity. This is an overall schematic diagram just to show how from Newtonian mechanics the factors are generalized into special relativity which is being further generalized into general theory of relativity. As a classical approach generally we start with special relativity and we will do so right now because the mathematics that we are going to learn about relativity and some part has already been used in its predecessor, that is, special theory of relativity. Okay, so when when I talk of special theory of relativity, uh, I, we are generally talking about inertial frames of reference, I mean to say which is not accelerating. It primarily deals with speed and velocity. Uh, it is experimentally provable by showing this. What I am trying to tell is that Wherever you can put in the equations of special relativity, it is experimentally provable and also it deals with frames of reference. So once we are starting with the study of special relativity, we should be very aware about these facts that it deals with inertial frame, it deals with speed and velocity, which is close to the speed of light. It is very much experimentally provable and it deals with frames of reference. General relativity, on the other hand, deals with non-inertial frames of reference. It includes and incorporates the concept of gravity. It also includes what is called the geometry of space-time and it is much more applicable on a larger scale. That means the general theory of relativity, if I if you want to experimentally see, definitely it has passed all the rigorous tests, but it is much more on a larger scale, where a special theory of relativity uh, can be used at a certain a point of time. So, what we can tell is that special relativity basically deals with relativity and simultaneity. That means it deals with speed, time, and space. Where the general relativity, because it deals with the study of geometry, that is the geometry of space time, 
it deals primarily with surfaces and curvatures. Now, what I am trying to tell you is that when we are dealing with the mathematics, special relativity comparison comparatively to general relativity comes easier because it deals with the speed, time, space, etc. General relativity because it deals with the entire global structure of the geometry. We often find that the equations and the mathematics are much more complex. Now here comes a question. Uh, I think that it, it might have occurred to your mind is that is it possible to learn general relativity without learning special theory? Uh, it might come up as a as a uh, question to your mind. So there might be two answers: no and yes. So if I say no because it deals with a conventional approach, so you go to any tutor, any book, they will say first tell that yes, you need to learn special relativity first. Uh, because from inertial it moves to non-inertial, so the study and the understanding would be much better. Uh, you need to understand the basics first, which we will see. I mean to say the Lorentz transformation and the frames of reference, etc. And it goes from easy problems to difficult, as I have been saying, that because uh, special relativity deals with speed, velocity, mass, energy, momentum, and energy, so it is uh, it becomes easy uh, because you uh, start with the easy. A concept and then you slowly back uh, go back to the difficult. So no, uh, in some way you need to have an understanding of special relativity because it is a conventional approach. You start with the basics and then you move up. Now if I tell yes, then what I can tell you is that yes, in some way you can learn taking independently general relativity as independent theory. The reason is that it has got an independent approach. Because uh, if you go deep into the understanding of general relativity, you will see that there is less of relativity, but more of geometry. Where the special relativity contains much more of relative frames of reference, person standing here, person going there, different frames of reference. So it can be taught as an independent approach. Now, this is more of a theory of geometry rather than theory of relativity. I mean to say the general relativity. So it is more of a theory of geometry. We are dealing with the curvature of space time, etc. So in some way, yes, it can be approached. It uh, it deals with different maths uh, branches of mathematics, including tensors, differential geometry, diffeomorphism, manifolds, a little bit of topology. So yes, uh, I mean to say in some way, definitely we, you can approach because it deals with a different kind of a mathematics. And it is not re related to relativity. It is more of a geometrical theory. And yes, can learn with a geometric approach. So uh, these are the two approaches. I'm not saying that you should go with the no part or the yes part. I just thought that it can be a very nice question. So if it is no, you can go ahead with this kind of an approach. If it is yes, then you can start independently thinking geometry as a theory and how general relativity deals with geometry as independently and that is why the branches of mathematics are different and you can learn it independently. Uh, there might be uh, some people who will call it maybe yes, maybe no. I would say let us ignore with that. Uh, let us concentrate either on no or yes. Okay, now what we do is that we will try to understand how will we start reading or understanding relativity. What would be our approach? In understanding Einstein's relativity. Okay, first we take uh, this path, okay, which is going on the left hand side direction. I called it as an intuitive approach. So you will see there are a lot of mathematics, I mean to say, a lot of videos, uh, stuffs in internet, books, etc., which uh, demands that, uh, or rather claims that they are teaching general relativity in an intuitive approach. So what intuitive approach happens is that there are a lot of misconceptions which happens. And you will never be able to learn the math part. Uh, there will be almost a kind of a virtual reality. You would never be able to see the real world. And there will be a lot of wrong concepts. Because physics is the language for mathematics. And it becomes very difficult to understand, especially a theory which is totally mathematics based uh, in a very intuitive approach. So intuitive approach, if you're going, remember these are the common uh, errors. Or common misconceptions which might happen. So let us uh, not take the intuitive approach for the time being. If I go in this direction, that's the blue right direction, it is called a pure mathematical approach. 
So what happens is that in pure mathematical approach, it takes a huge amount of time because you really have to grab and understand all those mathematics which is dictating relativity. Uh, you have to have a very uh, thorough knowledge of the subject and it is not good for starters because it takes a huge amount of time and effort etc and in the meantime you might lose the interest for the subject. But however yes pure mathematical can be an approach and that is by a tick a green tick yes you can do. So if you are not taking an intuitive approach you are not taking a pure mathematical approach what approach can we take we can take a middle path. This is something which we are going to adopt in this video. So here the math becomes clear. It is less arduous. It takes a moderate time. It has a very good liking towards the subject and most importantly it has got a mathematically intuitive approach. That means the approach that we are taking in this video will have both intuitive as well as mathematical so that it becomes clear. It is less arduous. It takes less amount of time and the mathematics that we are developing is also kind of an intuitive approach. So yes, we are going ahead with the middle path. So this is a question which most of the students were starting to, uh, you know, learn relativity. You will have that can I learn general relativity all by myself? That means you are self-learning, you are self-teaching yourself into uh, uh, relativity, especially general. So I would say yes, you can. But if I mean to say there is a clause, you know these subjects very well. You know differential calculus, you know multivariable calculus, you know very well linear algebra, tensor calculus, differential geometry, curvature and tensors, Riemannian geometry, geodesics, Cauchy surfaces, Regge calculus, and Lagrangian formulation. So you need to have a very good grasp on all those areas of mathematics. Then, yes, if you have those approaches and those understanding, then you can self learn or go ahead and teaching yourself relativity but here is something which I would like to tell there is a but I would still uh, recommend you that please verify your learning get hold of a good mentor get hold of a tutor a teacher who will just handhold you and whatever you are learning you can verify yours uh, with the tutor right so uh, even in my case I have uh, consulted with numerous tutors even now whether I am learning or here I am understanding those concepts or not. So yes, you can self-teach yourself, self-learn the generativity with those concepts of mathematics. But still, I would request you to have a, uh, you know, mentor or a teacher or professor who can verify your learning. So we are starting classically. We are first going with the core concepts of mathematics of special relativity, and then we are going to look into what are the best books that are concerned. Okay, so what are the mathematics that is required? Not much. You need to know multivariable calculus, linear algebra, vector operations. You need to have a thorough understanding of Euclidean geometry and a complete imagination on frames of reference. Now, when I take imaginations, what I am trying to tell you is that because relativity, especially special relativity, will concern with a lot of frames of reference, moving, non moving, this part, that part. So you must be able to visualize and imagine what is happening in this frame and that frame. So imaginations on frames of reference is very important. The primary concepts, just a kind of a list, it is not exhaustive. Again, I repeat, it is not exhaustive. It would be time, space, time, events, or the frames of reference, coordinate transformation, postulates of special relativity, what are space-time diagrams, Lorentz transformation, and Minkowski metric. Again, I am telling this is just a kind of a basic idea it won't be it is not exhaustive at all so the first would be lorentz transformation so in physics the lorentz transformation are a six parameter family of linear transformations from a coordinate system i would say coordinate frame in space time to another frame that moves at a constant velocity relative to the former the respective inverse transformation is then parameterized by the negative of this velocity the transformation is actually named after the Dutch physicist Hendrik Antoon Lorentz. I would recommend that please go through the derivation part at least for the Lorentz transformation. Next comes the frames of reference. Nothing much to tell. As I told you, you need to have a complete thorough and a clear imagination of what is happening in each frames of reference. 
It comes next is the time dilation and in physics and relativity time dilation is the difference in the elapsed time as measured by two clocks. It is either due to relative velocity between uh, them, I mean it is a special relativistic kinetic time dilation or to a difference of gravitational potential between their locations. When it is unspecified time dilation usually refers to the effect due to velocity. The next important thing which comes is length contraction. Uh, you know, it is already uh, given over there what is a length contraction. Next important part is space time diagram. So, a space time diagram is a graphical illustration of the properties of space and time in special theory. Uh, space time diagrams allow a qualitative understanding of the corresponding phenomena like time dilation and length contraction without mathematical equations. Uh, the history of an object's location throughout all time traces out a line referred to as the objects of the world line which is right there on the screen in a space-time diagram. Points in space-time diagram represent fixed position in space and time and are referred to as events. Well, there is something which is called a relativistic mass. Now, the word mass has two meanings in special relativity. One is invariant mass also called rest mass which is an invariant quality which is the same for all observers in all frames of reference while the relativistic mask is dependent on the velocity of the observer according to the concept of mass energy equivalence. Invariant mass is equivalent to rest energy while relativistic mass is equivalent to relativistic energy which brings us to the next uh, concept what is relativistic kinetic energy. Uh, so, the relativistic kinetic energy is essentially defining uh, the kinetic energy of a particle as the excess of the particle energy over its rest mass energy. For low velocities, the expression approaches the non-relativistic kinetic expression. Next, we deal with what is called a relativistic momentum. As the velocity of a mass increases, its momentum increases according to the classical Newton's law P equals to mv mass times velocity. However, classical momentum theory becomes inconsistent with experimental data when a body is traveling at relativistic velocities. And also, we, uh, what we call, we have a kind of a, uh, what we call is a total relativistic energy. Now, uh, what I am trying to tell is that uh, these concepts which we are learning uh, in special relativity, so the classical mechanics is getting uh, a counterpart which is the relativistic counterpart. So, we are just going to touch base, not much, about what are those classical concepts which are getting a relativistic counterpart. The first one is called a vector or a four vector. So, in special relativity, a four vector is an object with four components which transform in a specific way under Lorentz star formations. We have something which is called a gradient and a four gradient. We also have a velocity, four velocity, acceleration and four acceleration. 4 acceleration is a 4 vector that is analogous to classical acceleration. 4 acceleration has applications in areas such as the annihilation of antiprotons, resonance of strange particles and radiation of an accelerated charge. We also get what is called a 4 momentum. 4 momentum is also called momentum energy is the generalization of the classical dimension momentum to 4 dimensional space time. Uh, we also have got something which is a cold called a force uh, which gets into four force if you talk, talk of thermodynamics heat flux into four heat flux and current into four current and potential goes into four potential. So these things I am sure you know those who are um, uh, you know studying with special relativity these are the classical mechanics concept vector gradient velocity etc which are getting a relativistic counterpart. The question is that why we are talking about this because without these the mathematics of special relativity would be incomplete. So, we also have something called a frequency and four frequency. We have something more in quantum mechanics which are being extended in relativistic counterpart. We are not going into this. So, we get something which is called a four momentum. We get a four velocity. We get a four acceleration which we have talked about and as you can see all of this actually basically contains calculus and classical mathematics. So, that is the reason I told that right at the beginning we need to have a very strong understanding about calculus and classical math. 
apart from calculus and classical maths there is one thing which is very very important uh, which we need to cover so now we come with uh, what we call what are the uh, best books in terms of special relativity now here i would like to uh, make a note to the viewers that these books which i am talking about these are read by me okay i mean to say these are books which are not i have just picked up from amazon and i have just showed you no it is not like that these are the books which i have read i have understood and you will soon see that i am i'm giving you uh, you know proofs on that that these books which i have read and why they are considered to be the best book the first book which i would recommend is uh, john archibald willer and edwin f taylor both of them very celebrated uh, mathematician physicist and writers space time physics i will show you why i am considering this to be the first book second is the very classic feynman lectures on physics volume 1 2 and 3 which contains special relativity and the third book would be that of farooq rahman's special theory of relativity uh, farooq rahman is basically a phd doctorate in the university uh, with his uh, physics uh, degree so this is a wonderful book on special relativity uh the feynman lectures on physics you don't have to purchase uh, uh, it is available on caltech uh, website and you can find the details in my in the description box also you can also take care of the international best seller which is einstein's own written book on relativity which covers both special and general i would also recommend you to go ahead with the lectures of professor leonard suskind uh on his stanford lectures on special relativity especially this is an absolutely great lectures it contains a series of i think around 20 uh, 22 lectures on special relativity it is excellent great which has a very lucid understanding on the mathematics part yes and we all know professor skind is one of the greatest teachers and mathematicians of all time go to youtube find out these special lectures special relativity lectures of professor skind and i think that you are going to enjoy that Okay, now why I am calling you this book, Space Time Physics, to be uh, one of the first and the best book. So, I would first recommend that you start with this book. And what is the reason? The reason is that you can see right on the screen, the mathematics is not that intense. Okay, so here you see that when some uh, the, 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 um, the authors are calculating the speed, so it is taking our speed relative to Earth frame equals to that means it is giving a kind of a mathematics which is very much descriptive rather than signs and calculus if you first start this book uh, where the mathematics is described on a, uh, on a on a literary term which we use on a daily conversation things become easier here also you will see that what do we mean by interval is given by this i know maybe the uh, photograph is the it is not available because i have taken screenshots from the book so this is the reason that you should first start with this book it gives a nice comprehensive and easy understanding on the mathematics of special relativity then you can start with farooq rahman's book this is uh, what the uh, book uh, some snapshots look like the force in special theory and this so now you see that what i am suggesting is that first get a get hold of the easy mathematics part which we are daily speaking in a language then you can go to the uh, real mathematics part which is this one the theory of special relativity by farooq rahman you can find the book and these are how the mathematics is dealt with uh, most of the students and uh, you know beginners make a uh, mistake that they really don't go uh, rigorously through linear algebra linear algebra is the basic foundation for both special and general so i would give you certain suggestions on the books of linear algebra my first preference would be Kenneth Hoffman's Linear Algebra. Second would be Evergreen Book of Gilbert Strang. And third would be Shom's Outlines of Linear Algebra. And the fourth would be David C. Lay's Linear Jabla, Algebra and its Application. So these are the first four books which you should take it up and you should go ahead in learning Linear Algebra. Okay, now we come to the core part which is called general relativity core concepts mathematics and best books i'm not going to deal in details with the concepts because those are being explained in my earlier videos in the playlist of general relativity however what i will do is that i will just touch base and mostly concentrate on the book part 
The first thing is that we all know that general relativity deals with tensors. Now, before going ahead in understanding what are the books and how should we study, we need to know why do we need tensors. Now, in a kind of a flat space time, I am taking x as uh, say spatial dimension and y just in general, and we got a vector like a, then we can calculate the components of the vector y in this direction which we call a y x in this direction which is called a x the red lines which are there and we can calculate in this way the components of the vector a now suppose i get a curved space time and i plot the same x y here in this curved space time i mention the x as x prime and y as y prime and the vector a obviously remains the same so what we do when we calculate or try to get the uh, what we call the component of the vectors this one becomes a prime x and this one becomes a prime y and then we join those uh, blue lines in order to get the uh, components of the vector what we see is that a prime x is longer than the original ax on the right hand side a prime y also is a little bit longer than the original ay however the vector a is invariant so, th this is the basic start, this is basic inception of the concept of tensors when uh, we try to find out the length of the vector, but when we plot it in different coordinates, we find that these things are changing. However, the length of the vector A remains invariant. So, what we can tell is that we need to create a mathematical model so that we can measure or rather predict the change in event in the space time either in the contravariant that means in opposite direction or in the covariant that means in the same direction so tensors will help us understanding transformational properties which is always same in all coordinate system and whose components transform in a very nice manner so we can tell that if the vector changes obviously the, if the vector a changes then there is a problem in measurement so the vector remains invariant the components of the vector however changes and we need to develop a method in which we can measure them and any mathematical entity which is invariant under rotation of coordinate is called a tensor so uh, we are talking about covariance and uh, covariant tensor that means it changes in the same way for example if this one v is a kind of a, a, a for example a vector then in covariant it will uh, it will change in this way in the same way right it is called covariance so distance vector remains the same whereas in contravariant that means contra means in the opposite direction if v is the vector then it might increase in this way right so the distance vector is double i'm so sorry so this is the essence of what we called contra and covariant so in covariant tensor the distance remains the same things are moving in the same direction and contravariant means it is in the opposite direction the distance is being doubled or whatsoever so whatever happens we need to form tensors so that we can understand how things are changing this is in very brief i have got a totally separate video what is called tensors in general relativity you can check it out in my in my playlist this is just to tell that the need for the tensors now let us see that when we talk of einstein's field equation the entire genre of field equation is embraced by tensors we have got a Ricci curvature tensor which tells how the volume of a matter changes when it moves from flat space to curved space we will look into it we have also got a Ricci scalar which keeps track of how the size of a ball deviates from standard Euclidean space we got a metric tensor that is a way of measuring distance and all the causal structure angles etc of space time is uh, is being measured by there we got also the Riemann curvature tensors which is a tool to describe the curvature of Riemannian manifolds and we have got stress energy momentum tensor which uh, tells you the matter movement how it moves through space time so now is the time when we are just going to touch base just in a few minutes about all those tensors because the mathematics that we would be showing you uh, would be based on those tensors and it will make things easier so if you are dealing with curved surfaces then what we need is gravity it defines gravity through field equations if the measurements are not orthogonal as we have seen for a curved surface obviously they are not orthogonal so for that we need tensors 
so that if the basis of the vectors are changing, still we can calculate in a predictable manner. We have to frame a new geometry because uh, uh, this this is a totally a new kind of curve curve space time, not like special relativity is flat space time. So we have something which is called a Riemannian geometry. We are moving from Euclidean to non-Euclidean geometry. So what we need here is differential geometry, which we will deal with. Also, there is a principle of general covariance. That means when things are changing, it should change according to certain rules. And that is why we call it a covariant theory of gravity. If you have noticed my earlier video, I have shown that how Michel Besso, especially Marcel Grossman, helped Einstein to frame the complete covariant theory of gravity because the knowledge of tensors was unknown to Einstein. It is his friends and colleagues who finally helped to bring tensors in general relativity so that he could achieve his milestone, a covariant theory of gravity. Okay, so first we uh, now come to know what is a metric tensor. So in general, if we plot a kind of a, a right angle triangle, we call the old Ionian Pythagoras and we can calculate this in this way. Although this is Pythagoras' theorem, in the differential terms, we are calculating the differential differences in finite symbol small differences. So this is how we measure ds square equals to dx squared plus dy squared. If we get this kind of a, a curved space like this, this is, which is right on your screen, and we get these two dots, then how do we measure this line which are joining those two dots? Obviously, we cannot use the Pythagoras' theorem. We best this kind of a equation, which I'm not going to explain right now, but this is a kind of a quadratic equation, right? 4x squared plus dx, 2xy plus 3y squared takes a quadratic form. This dx and dy, it actually means that things are not perpendicular. That means they are not orthogonal. So now you can relate. We are just now talking about things which are not orthogonal and we need to have a Riemannian or a separate kind of a geometry. So when we plot this in a kind of a quadratic equation, we get something which are not perpendicular to each other. G actually in this particular term is denoting the amount of spread. What do we mean by the amount of spread? I will show you. Say, for example, this is a sphere and we are drawing a line which curves along with this. And I, I uh, expand this or I magnify this sphere. And what I do is that I take a straight line, right, which is on a kind of a, a patch. And I'm trying to patch this line or this strip of, uh, uh, I would say, a uh, piece of leather or whatever over here, here and here. Okay. So I'm just trying to map, I'm just trying to put in those, uh, these uh, lines or this strip into this map. So what happens is that the lines take this kind of a shape. So this is the stretch part which is being stretched. This is the unstretched one. So what I'm trying to tell is that if you use calculus, that is dx and dy on the unstretched part and we can map that unstretched part on the stretched mapping of the sphere, then we get this one and this is called the metric tensor. So we can compute distance between two points on any curved manifold and again it takes this kind of a form. So this is something which we have seen earlier and uh, what I am trying to show you over here is that we take an unstretched strip of uh, 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 un unstretched strip and when I put it on the map I get the tensor's value through which I can calculate the two points on any manifold. So you see here, these lines are much more dense compared to these lines, which are much more spread out. So these lines, these arrows, it shows that this is much dense, uh, kind of, I would say, much denser area, and this is much loose. And this G1, G1, G22, which is the metric tensor, actually shows where you stand, or rather, I would say, what is the dense part and what is the loose part. So G depends on what you are, and this G is called the metric, which is later called metric tensor. If you're really, uh, you know, willing to go ahead and learn what is a metric tensor, you can check out my uh, video, which is there in my uh, playlist on general relativity, which is only related to metric tensor. So what we can do is that we can summarize that if I know the stretching information of those complex manifolds, we calculate the distance between two points. 
the entire stretching information is stored in the metric and metric tensor helps us to understand those coordinates and measure them and it is a nice coincise mathematical framework. So this gives you an idea of what is actually a metric tensor and why it is important. We will touch base uh, quickly over what is called a parallel transport, Riemann curvature tensor and covariant derivative. These are all important concepts and each of them I have a separate detailed video so you can check it on my playlist about if you are willing to learn in much more details. Okay, so what do we mean by parallel transport? Simple, when we are comparing one vector to another, uh, we can always, uh, you know, put one vector on the other and we see that, okay, this is matching with this vector, that means it is the same. In this case, this is a bigger one and this is a smaller one. So this is one way in which we compare uh, vectors in order to tell which one is bigger and which one is smaller. However, it is a yeah, it is a way of comparing vectors at different positions in the manifold. It is a way of transporting data along smooth surfaces in manifold, which we will see. So this is a kind of a triangle. I hope uh, I think this is an equilateral triangle. And now, if you have got this one, this red uh, point, and we are trying to transport or move around this equilateral triangle with this yellow. Vector. So I go here. Remember the orientation should be should be the same. I go here, further here, and then I move here, and then I move here. See the arrow of the vector is not changing, and finally I come over here. So if are, here, what happens is that the black arrow or the vector overlaps this vector. What does it mean? That means in a flat space, when we are parallelly transporting a vector, it comes back to the original space place. So the yellow vector and the red vector overlapping each other, which I just told you at the beginning, that means it has come back and we have successfully parallelly transported a vector. But in case of a sphere, it doesn't happen always. So if I am standing over here, this red one, and if I am willing to move over here, then I will try to keep my vector as straight as possible. I name this vector as V and I start moving. I start, I am trying to keep the vector as simple as possible but it is curving in this way. It is because of the curvature. Now I want to move in this way. I still keep the vector straight, straight, straight. So you see the direction of the vector is changing because due to curvature. I, it is still changing. Now from here I move, want to go up to the north pole, up to this red, uh, red dot, red line. And I try to keep the vector, try to keep the vector. No, it doesn't happen. So when I come back with this, uh, a blue vector, you can see the original V vector was pointing on the right direction and this vector is pointing in some other direction. So if we take out these two vectors and try to measure the distance V and V prime, then this is actually given by what is called a Riemann curvature tensor. It's a very gross understanding. Obviously, it is not a complete understanding. I've got a separate video on that. So Riemann curvature tensor describes the change of all the components of this vector in space-time direction. This is the Riemann manifold, uh, Riemann, sorry, Riemannian curvature tensor, and it actually denotes the entire tidal force of general relativity. So this is what is Riemann curvature all about. We try to parallelly transport, we are unable. The difference is given by the Riemann curvature tensor. So you see that we in parallel transport, we are trying to keep the vector constant, but it is not possible. So parallel transport cannot keep vectors constant. So what do we do? We introduce a new concept which is called covariant derivative. And it is you know, said by this Nabla sign. So this is the direction. This is the vector field. So covariant derivative is something which denotes the rate of change of a vector field. So it is a tool which helps us to find parallel transported vector fields. Because parallel transport in vectors doesn't happen. Uh, although we try to keep it as straight as possible, covariant derivative comes as a savior, as a tool which helps us to find the parallel transported vector fields. Okay, now we come uh, quickly to what is called a geodesic deviation and a Ricci curvature. So if we are moving along these two lines, and these are the two separation, I would say separation vectors technically, then this is what happens is that the Ricci curvature, as I have told, that it denotes how much it is changing. So here it is zero, right? And the sectional uh, 
the separation vector is also zero. If we get this kind of a um, you know curve or a manifold where things are converging, here uh, the Ricci curvature is greater than zero or the uh, separation vector is less than zero. Here it is spreading out, so the Ricci curvature is less than zero and the separation vector is greater than zero. This is how geodesic deviation actually takes place. I've, again, I have got a separate video on geodesic deviation. You can look onto it. Now we come something which is called a sectional curvature. Nothing much to worry. So if I'm trying to, uh, you know, move a ball in, in this kind of a place, what it happens is that it straight away moves and comes to the end. So we get a sectional curvature zero. The Ricci curvature is also zero. Why? Because the size of the ball remains the same, right? So this is actually, if you remember the definition I, uh, I, I spoke, uh, what is Ricci curvature? It is basically a deviation of a ball from a Euclidean space. Now suppose we get this kind of a manifold. Here it is converging, right? So if I get a ball from here and I move here and I move here, what it happens? It is shrinking. So here it's the Ricci curvature is greater than zero. Sectional curvature is also greater than zero. The size of the ball shrinks. So this is being measured by Ricci curvature. If again this kind of a geodesic, which are spreading out each other, then this ball will increase, increase in size. So here the sectional curvature is less than zero, and the Ricci curvature is also less than zero. So this is just a very, very quick and a gross idea of what actually Ricci curvature does and how the volume of the ball as it changes in different geodesics is being measured by Ricci curvature. So one, the ball remains the same, where it is zero. One, where the ball shrinks in size, where the Ricci curvature is greater than zero. And one, where the size of the ball increases, that is Ricci curvature is less than zero. Okay, let us now see what is called a Ricci scalar. Now Ricci scalar, as I told you, this R denotes the Ricci scalar. It keeps track how the size of a ball deviates from Euclidean space. So in flat circle, this is basically what is called the uh, Ricci uh, flat uh, ball. Then it moves and it becomes a disc. So here is there when I'm trying to fit uh, this disc over here. So here I'm trying to fit. So the area that fits in the, on the sphere is something I would say uh, the area that fits on the sphere is more than it fits on this space. So this is actually what is the job of Ricci scalar. So Ricci scalar actually you see it starts with a circle which is pi r square and the area increases further and the surface area increases as the ball gets smaller and we are trying to figure the surface area increases to 2 pi r square. So as the circle becomes shorter we can fit more area and hence we can say that uh, it can fit large amount of area in the small boundary. So Ricci scalar, as I told you, is the ball, uh, the area of the ball which is changing. That is basically taken care of Ricci scalar. Okay, the stress energy momentum tensor. In very brief, this is the stress energy momentum tensor. This part speaks of the momentum density. This one, the this one is also the momentum density. Don't worry about the terms, which we will clear up in a few seconds of time. This is the energy density, this is the shear stress, this is the pressure, and this is the momentum flux, uh, the, the blue one, right? So uh, what I am trying to tell is that this E equals to mc squared, this will always be high, and that is why T00 would be the energy density, because of the speed of the light of the C squared part. So every part of energy, I mean to say everything, every single thing on the universe which we you can you can think of pure energy, pure rest mass, stress, shear stress, etc. In some way, find a space in this tensor. This is the house, and this is responsible for the curvature of space time. Here are the meaning of the terms: energy density is the amount of energy stored; energy flux is the rate of transfer of energy; momentum density, momentum per unit volume; momentum flux is the rate of change; and we have got pressure. We know the formula, and shear stress is given by tau. Uh, which is this expression. So these are the terms and remember the stress energy momentum tensor again is responsible for the curvature of space time. So here it is the presence of matter which causes gravity. Mass density is proportional to energy density. Mass density also contributes to gravity. It is a transfer of energy and gravitational effects are caused by energy density, momentum density and stress tensor and all of these are responsible for the space-time curvature. 
So there are a lot of uh, intricate details into stress energy tensor, but this video, because it is a study guide, I just wanted to give you a basic idea of what is a stress tensor. Now we come to the most important part. What are the best books of tensors? Again, when I'm talking of best books, I mean to say those books which I have read and which I will give you a complete guide of that. The first book uh, I have spoken earlier also in my uh, videos, Daniel Fleisch, A Student's Guide to Vector and Tensors. This is, will be your Bible. The next book by Taha Sochi, it is called Principles of Tensor Calculus. Wonderful book. And the last one is called GEA Hayes, Vector and Tensor Analysis. Don't worry, we are going to look what part of tensor is being covered in those books. Okay, so the third book would be uh, A.I. Borisenko and Tarapov's Vector and Tensor Analysis with Applications. Yes, definitely. It's a very good book. The next would be Louis Brandt's A Little Bit Advanced Vector and Tensor Analysis. And I am also going to talk about this part of Prasun Kumar Naik's Tensor Calculus and Differential Geometry. He is a professor of mathematics in the University of Jadavpur. So, this is also so. These are the six books which I would recommend on Tensor. Okay, so let us see what are the topics which are being covered. I mean to say, tensors are definitely important. We understood everything. But is it covering general relativity? Is it covering the topics that we are going to learn? So, if I take this book, you will see I have underlined in, I have made box in red. So, it is covering metric tensor. It is covering tensor derivatives, Christoffel symbols, covariant differentiation and Riemann curvature tensor. So, this is in all, I am saying that it covers essential parts of general relativity. Okay, further if I go, then it covers covariant uh, and contravariant components coordinate transformation and those things which you can see right there. So this book is first of all very easy to understand, very uh, user friendly, simple, uh, less amount of complications are there and it covers those areas of tensors which are required in general relativity. Now this book, uh, Principles of Tensor Calculus, I would say this is the best book for a step by step learning. If you really want to learn tensor calculus, you are, you go through this, it is a step-by-step -step learning. I mean to say, it is detailed, it contains each and everything which we will see now. So you see, these are the, uh, you know, it starts with the nomenclature, preliminaries, it is very exhaustive, very important and very good book. And you see these uh, spaces and coordinate systems, tensors are being covered. Further, it will contain all those things, the tensor operations, which you need to learn, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and the tensor types also. It's a very, 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 very good book. So here you see it contains all those important topics starting from contraction, <coughs> I'm so sorry, uh, inner permutation, dot product, magnitude of a vector, what not. So step by step, this book will take you into the details of tensors. Further, you see these are the things which are being covered. So here it is: the riemann christoffel curvature tensor, the Bianchi identity, and Ricci curvature. Uh, everything, everything is being covered. So this is another important book after Daniel Fleisch, Principles of Tensor Calculus by Taha Sochi. Uh, you can read this book; it will take you one by one into the details. Okay, Tensor uh, Calculus and Differential Geometry by Prasun Kumar Naik. This book, as you can see, I have just given those which are related to relativity. It completely covers Riemannian metric. It also covers, I'm so sorry, it covers Riemannian metric. Christoffel symbols right at the bottom, you can see, you know, in details. Okay, it covers Christoffel symbols, covariant differentiation and Riemannian geometry. So, I am not going through the entire book. Obviously, it is not possible, but I am giving you glimpses so that you can understand that these books are something which are very good and this is how you should read and this is how the uh, i would say the uh, the tech the the, the uh, topics are being covered okay further if we go then we get something which is called relativistic mechanics and the entire minkowski space generalized relativity maxwell's equations these are being covered so relativistic mechanics is we are talking about the invariance of velocity acceleration etc and the minkowski space which is uh, which is important to special relativity, flat space time. So, this is also being covered. 
So Prasun Kumar Naik's Tensor Calculus and Differential Geometry, it is a must go book. GEA's Vectors and Tensor Analysis also covers up tensor analysis in details. As you can see, this part I have underlined covariant, contravariant, mixed, everything. These are important. And right at the bottom, you can see geodesics, curvature tensor, Cartesian tensors, and absolute differentiation, Christoffel symbols. Everything is being covered. Okay, so if I go to Boris and Co's book, the good part is that this book has got lot of illustrations. I mean to say, uh, it has got equations, but more than that, it has got illustrations. Let us see. For example, this one, if if you're making to understand what is a cylindrical coordinate, this is how it is being explained. Further, you will see this one, the stress tensor in generalized coordinates. Below, you will see tensor on ellipsoids and symmetric tensor. This is a beautiful book which will give you a complete visual understanding of tensors, which will be easy for you to learn. Okay, we now come to the second core part of uh, general relativity, which is called curved surfaces, manifold, and we require differential geometry. We'll just touch base on that. So, Bernhard Riemann on this book actually first introduced uh, the concept of uh, manifold, and it was translated by another great mathematician, William Kingdom Clifford, whom on whose name we have got Clifford algebra. So, if you are trying to visualize or understand what is a manifold, here is a sphere, here is a person standing, and if this person moves here, 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 and then here, and finally ends here. If I plot the same sphere over here, and then I again plot the walking of this person here, 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 and then here, and then here, and then here. So, what I get is that this ma manifold, that is the sphere manifold, becomes something which is locally resembling as an Euclidean space in each point. That is the beauty and that is what is called a manifold. That means I would be able to resemble anything on a Euclidean space in each point. So, what is happening is that a person on a flat space is resembling that of a sphere, but to him it is locally Euclidean. This part is the global part and this is the local part. So, manifold is a topological space that is locally Euclidean. So, what I get is this point P, this points in the neighborhood can be used by tuples x1, x2 up to xn. So, Euclidean Cartesian space is all that which is denoted by the real number R. A locally Euclidean space is topologically looks like Rn. Simple. The same definition which is being used. So, this is local and this is Euclidean. So, what I am trying to tell you is that because general relativity ex extensively deals with manifold, we are just trying to understand what is a manifold. Okay, so here is a kind of a curve, right? Uh, these are the different kinds of manifold, right? Now, in this manifold, we are trying to measure uh, lines going like this. So, here this is a positive curvature. We have just seen that Ricci curvature is, uh, you know, uh, it denotes positive. Here the lines are going straight, so it has got a zero curvature, and here it is going like this, so it has got a negative curvature. So when I try to plot this positive zero and negative curvature on a flat space time or a flat piece, what I do, I differentiate and divide and divide and divide using calculus that is dy by dx, and I get a kind of an area like dA. So what I'm trying to tell is that when we are applying the rules of calculus on this manifold, this looks locally Euclidean. So you can see these yellow lines, they are looking absolutely locally Euclidean. So this is what I am trying to demonstrate and make you understand about what is a manifold and how it looks like. So any positive, negative, whatever the curvature is, when we plot it on a space time, a flat space time, flat space, then we use calculus and we can apply the rules of calculus on a manifold. That is why it is useful. So, we can tell that these yellow things which are cropping out here can be mapped into Rn and that is why this is something I would say equal, it is isomorphic to each other. So, a manifold is a space that is topologically or I would say locally isomorphic to a Cartesian space Rn. Just to give you a kind of a basic understanding what is a manifold and how it looks like. Okay, so yeah, so we go back here. 
right so this is how it happens so we get this okay uh next we come to a very common phenomena i would say you must have uh, i mean to say every single person of ours we must have seen this kind of a figure and we have also seen uh, what is this right and we have also seen this right so i'm just trying to tell you what that actually it means we we, we have seen curvatures etc right so here if you see then okay i go back here so these are the boxes right and what does it mean these are actually differentiable manifolds so we are actually taking the manifold and we are differentiating it and this is this one the sun and the earth these are basically what we call are the curvatures these are called the curvatures and these lines if you remember uh, this g lines are denser right and here the lines are loose these are being uh, defined by metric tensor so there the lines are loose right and this is what actually the line shows is the geodesic part so this is a kind of a complete uh, i would say an idea so here you see the metric tensor which defines where you are standing whether the manifold is loose or it is dense then it shows the geodesic path uh, that is uh, where the lines emerge and then once we differentiate we get a differentiable manifold and then we get the curvature so i just wanted to tell you that we have been watching we can see those on internet this is how if we can divide and we can understand how it looks like so what is a differentiable manifold this is a definition which you can look uh, is a type of a manifold that is locally similar and we can apply calculus a differential manifold is a generalization to a higher dimension of concept of smooth surface and a differential manifold is a topological space which is locally homeomorphic to euclidean space I'm not going to define homeomorphic we can <laughs> take it up later i have defined already in the topology videos and that the gluing functions which relate those euclidean local charge to each other for a fixed degree of differential just take a snapshot idea of what is a differentiable manifold okay so this is where we can perform the calculus and differential or differentiable manifold is a topological manifold which has got a differentiable structure so these d denotes that we can perform calculus and differentiable structure is something which is this you can skip or you can read it this is just for the sake of understanding what is a differential manifold we will soon come to the reason why we are talking about all those so now what we will do is that we are going to overall just overall we will see what are the concepts of differential geometry so we see we have a manifold uh we have a vector and tensor fields we have bundles and connections and we have got, got a gauge theory so manifolds will comprise of all those this is an exhaustive list so those who are marked in red are those which we are going to learn and which you are going to learn because it is important to general relativity so manifold smooth manifold riemannian chart differentiable structure and diffeomorphism if i come to vectors and tensors these are important if i come to bundles and connections these are important if i go to gauge theory non abelian gauge theory is important so this is a kind of a snapshot right you can take a screenshot you can take a photograph so vector field tensor all those which are marked in red are those which are very important to general relativity that's it further we get differential geometry of curves differential geometry of surfaces differential topology and riemannian topology so we are just dividing the entire differential geometry in these structures let us see one by one so these are the important elements of differential geometry of curves these are all of them are important starting from theorem agregium to elliptic point asymptotic curvature that is why i have made all in uh, red differential to this one differential topology diffeomorphism large diffeomorphism and orientability and riemannian geometry all of them are important those which are not important i mean to say those which are red uh, i'm so sorry black this goes too much into the analysis of differential geometry for research etc which is not required so this a particular slide gives you again a thorough understanding of what are the topics or elements you should learn in differential geometry we have got riemannian geometry and we have got connections 
So in Riemannian geometry again, you see geodesic, scalar curvature. We just uh, saw what is a sectional curvature, vial tensor, everything. All these are important. So these are the overall concepts of differential geometry. So now we go ahead and learn what are the differential geometry, what are the best books that we do. Now this book is uh, a wonderful, it's a gem, Visual Differential Geometry and Forms by Tristram Needham. Uh, before we go ahead, let us understand who is the author of this book. Okay, Tristan Needham is a British mathematician and he uh, his academic advisor was uh, is Roger Penrose. So this is a kind of a, because most of the time we go and read, read ahead the books which are without knowing or uh, seeing who is the author. So just a kind of a brief idea that who is Tristan Needham. Okay, so we, we cover mostly all the aspects of uh, uh, general relativity. So you see Euclidean and non-Euclidean Gaussian curvature is being covered. Then we got mapping of surfaces, the metric, pseudosphere, hyperbolic plane. Then we come to parallel transport. We have just seen what is a parallel transport. Then we come to uh, intuitive uh, geometry of theorem, egregium, global uh, uh, Gauss's Bonnet theorem. So all these are being covered. Then we come to this part. This is important. You see this part. The entire Riemann curvature tensor, commutator, Riemann curvature uh, is a tensor, components of Riemann, everything is being covered. Very detailed book. Then we got the bottom part that is tensor, computational proofs of the Jacobi equation. Then we get the entire Riemann curvature and here it is. You see Einstein's curve said the happiest moments in my life. You, I hope you remember the postulates. Then we got the space-time metric, the Schwarzschild solution the Einstein equation and the gravitational collapse and black hole and the greatest blunder that is the cosmological constant. Now the most important part of this book it is very easy to read. It contains huge amount of graphs, huge amount of pictures, photographs, illustrations and it becomes extremely important and easy for all of us to understand. So this is just to show you the content and most importantly you see how extensively most of the topics of general relativity has, is being covered. Okay, these are the four books which I would re recommend for differential geometry. First, we will Andrew Prisley, then Thomas Bankoff and Stephen Lovey's Differential Geometry of Curved Surfaces, then PMH Wilson's Curved Surfaces, and Introduction by Differential Geometry by T. G. Wilmore. We will just look into this because just I want to tell you that the first two books, uh, Andrew Prisley and Thomas Bankoff, does not assume that you know topology. So you can safely pick up these books. Okay, Thomas Mankoff is actually an American mathematician in specializing in geometry. This is his photograph. Just wanted to tell you uh, who he is. He's, uh, in Brown University, has been, uh, you know, teaching, um, uh, teaching uh, since 1967. Stephen Lovett is also uh, into Wheaton College and he has received his PhD. So Thomas Francis Bankoff actually, you know, is a professor and in, in differential geometry in three and four dimensions. Uh, Bankoff attended the University of Notre Dame and received his PhD from UC Berkeley in 1964. Where he was a student of Sheng Shen Chern. You all know who is Sheng Shen Chern. I don't need to tell. If you go into my history of differential geometry, you will understand. And uh, he has also attended, uh, he taught in Harvard University and. Uh, University of Amsterdam. Stephen Lovett, uh, you know, he's joined the faculty of Eton College and he's uh, of his positive experience as an undergraduate student at Brown University working on differential geometry ebooks. And most importantly, he is uh, during that time he was a sum summer intern with US Department of Defense and Dr. Lovett maintains his own active research with the program of the students. So here are those topics which I just wanted to show you from Andrew Priestley's lovely book. There are more, but as you can see, this is the first, without assuming topology, a great book to learn differential geometry. Now here comes another great person, uh, Thomas James Wilmore. Right. Now Thomas James Wilmore is actually an, is an English geometer. Right. Uh, he's best known for his work on Riemannian three space. Wilmore actually studied at King's College London after his graduation in 1939 and uh, he was appointed as a lecturer at the onset of World War II and this is actually 
uh, one of the William Wilmore surfaces, uh, which has been uh, engraved at uh, Durham University in memory of Wilmore. He died in 20, 20th February 2005. And he worked primarily with PhD on relativistic cosmology and gained his PhD on clock regarduations uh, reg reg on general relativity at the University of London in 1943. Now, the reason why I'm showing you uh, this person is that of his book, Introduction to Differential Geometry. Now, you see, this book starts with uh, a very systematic way, theory of space curves, and it moves to metric of local intrinsic properties. Then it comes with the fundamental forms, the non-intrinsic. Then it goes into the differential geometry of surfaces in large. Further, it uh, takes care of the entire tensor calculus, you can see, and the Riemannian geometry. So, covariant differentiation, Riemannian geometry, the metric, curvature of tensors, I'm so sorry, uh, these are all being covered. So, this is an excellent book to start with differential geometry. Most of the students uh, get confused where to start. So, these are the steps. So, I have already shown you one, two, three books on differential geometry, starting with Andrew Prisley and then moving ahead to differential geometry of uh, T.J. Wilmore. Now, what are the best books in terms of general relativity? First, I would suggest would be Student's Guide of General Relativity by Norman Gray. This is a very basic book. If you're, um, you know, looking for something advanced, you won't get, but a very good book to start with. Robert M. Wiles' General Relativity is equally good. Space-Time Geometry by uh, Sean M. Carroll. And this is another book by Farooq Rahman, General Relativity uh, by Farooq Rahman. I have already shown you Special Relativity. So, this is another great book of him. This is, uh, uh, although uh, not a very known book, but it is excellent relativistic toolkit. Uh, the next one is Gravity, which has always been my favorite by James Hartley. Uh, this is a classic first course in general relativity by Bernard Schutz and by Stephen Winberg. But remember, these three books have a difficult read. It is heavy. It assumes that you know a lot of things. I mean to say the, uh, the, the the mathematics part. So that is why you see that before coming ahead and going ahead with the books, we first learn the mathematics. What are the books? How to go ahead with that? Okay, okay. So let us see what are the topics that we are covering in general relativity. First of all, I will take ahead with the book uh, Robert M. Wald, and I will show you these are the introduction manifold and tensor fields. is absolutely a very systematic book. Then it goes into Methods for solving Einstein's equations, causal structures, singularities, and everything. So, this is definitely indeed one of the best books of general relativity. It further goes into here the topological spaces, maps of manifolds, lead derivatives, and everything. So, I just wanted to show you what are the things it is covering. Now, I would come to the last book, which is called The Gravitation by Wissner, Thorne, and John Archibald Willer. This is one of the best book for learning step by step. I think if I'm not wrong, it is almost more than a thousand page book. But don't worry, this book contains everything, every single thing that you need to know about general relativity. Starting with space-time physics, then going into flat space-time, then the electromagnetic field. You see this one, it is so systematic. It contains a stress energy tensor, conservation laws. You see. So, we talked about stress energy momentum tensor, right? So, here it is. It is dealt with much details, right? This one. Then it deals with differential topology. And here I have marked this in red. You see geodesic deviation is covered. Newtonian gravity is covered. Riemannian metric is covered. Uh, everything. I, I, I tell you, this is a kind of a Bible. It converts every single thing you want to know about relativity. Then it comes to this part. And you see how mass. Uh, energy generates curvature. We are talking about this, right? Just a few minutes back, that how stress energy tensor, this has been covered here. Then it covers a little bit of cosmology. It co covers relativistic stars, pulses, stellar pulsations, etc. So, this, this one, the spherical stars, etc. Then it comes to gravitational collapse and black holes. I'm sorry. It contains everything related to Schwarzschild geometry, why black hole, principle of null congruences, everything. And then it goes to gravitational waves, generation of gravitational waves, and detection of gravitational waves. So uh, that's it. I think we have covered enough. Lot of books, lot of suggestions. 
Uh, so this is a kind of a summary about general relativity, common questions. We have learned what are the core concepts we do is in special relativity, what are the best books, what are the content we have seen each of the books contain, how, how it will help you, what are the core concepts of general relativity, what are the best books on tensors, what are the best books on differential geometry, what are the best books on general relativity and topics covered in the books of general relativity. Now, the thing is that you might ask me lastly a question, where can I get those books? Well, I have tried to give you the maximum possible links, uh, I mean to say legal things which are there on the internet where you can find out these books. Most of the links I have tried to embed in the description box. However, you all know my email ID which is there in the about. You can write to me. I will try to give, if any book is not available, I will look into it. If I have got the soft copy, I will definitely email it to you. So, it has been a very extensive, long and a detailed video on the mathematics of relativity. How will you learn? How will you approach? What are the best books? The content of the books? Which you would read first and which you would go next? Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please do like, subscribe and click on the bell icon to get all the notification from Physics for Students. This is Seanak signing off and promising to come with one, yet another one important video on physics and mathematics. Till then, have a nice weekend and goodbye. Now, you can be a part of our team. You can send your scientific articles, essays, research papers, lesson plans on a particular subject of science. For further details, please write to us at editor at physicsforstudents.com. Stay safe and happy.